Welcome to another Apollo Papyrus episode. I am Aaron Apollo Camp. For this episode, my interview guest is a former wedding officiant and innkeeper who is now writing a novel. She nearly self-published her novel until getting a last-minute literary agent offer that could lead to her novel being traditionally published. Her name is Jill Meyer, and here's my interview with Jill. Jill Meyer, welcome to Apollo Papyrus. Thank you. Feel free to introduce yourself to our listeners. Okay, sure. Um, so I originally grew up in New Jersey, um, and I moved to Cape Cod 20 years ago. Um, and I moved here because I uh, started a business, um, which was basically becoming an innkeeper. Um, I had been working in the corporate world and really hadn't enjoyed it. I was always trying to find my place in the work world and knew that I wanted to become an entrepreneur. So one day when I was at work, I was kind of scrolling through some real estate listings and I came upon a property in Chatham, which is on the Cape. Um, and it was a small inn and it, um, it looked like something that my husband and I might be able to take on. So I sent him the listing and he said, well, let's, you know, check it out. So on a whim, we went to Cape Cod and we looked at the property and made an offer for it basically on the spot. Um, we thought that we had the background to make it work. He was um, a hospitality major at Boston University and I studied business um, at Babson. So we had a really good combination of, of um, talents that we could contribute to making the inn a success. Um, and we did. After two and a half years of owning it, we brought the occupancy level from 19% to 70% year-round occupancy. And um, with only having six guest rooms, it was a small property. We didn't have a staff and we were ready to move on to something larger. So we sold that and we, it, it just so happened to work out. The timing was perfect that the property next door to the inn um, was another larger inn and it had 16 guest rooms and it was on the market. So we sold our smaller property and we bought the, the captain's house in, um, which was a four diamond property. It came with a staff and a whole lot more responsibility. Um, so we, we, um, took that on and we ran that for the next 13 years. Um, it was successful and we loved it for the most part, but it certainly came with challenges. Um, one of which was the fact that during our 13 years there, we had five kids. <laughs> um, so we became overwhelmed between the responsibility of running a four diamond inn and raising five kids and decided that it was time to move on and uh, find another career that was more conducive to family life. Um, we put that on the market and once again, timing was on our side and we sold it just before COVID hit. Um, so that was a really big turning point in our lives, um, trying to figure out what our next move would be career wise. Um, we took some time off during COVID to spend with our family, which was much needed. And my husband went back to school uh, to study accounting and meanwhile, I started building up what a side business that I had already started while I was an innkeeper, which was officiating weddings. Um, I built that business up and I wanted to incorporate my passion for writing into that. Um, so what I did was instead of just officiating weddings, I offered to write personal wedding vows for people, um, wedding speeches, customized wedding ceremonies. And so I built that business up with, with my writing talents, but I still really wanted to write something that was just mine, um, something more creative and something um, that, that was just for me. So I had the background of innkeeping um, and I had always thought, you know, with all the stories that go on behind the scenes at an inn, I thought it would be really interesting to write a book about about innkeeping and what all goes on that people don't really know about. Um, I started to do that and I just, I wasn't enjoying it probably because I was reliving a career that I, I was really done with and I didn't want to relive all the downsides of it. Um, but I 
I did have this knowledge of hospitality and, and all the romantic notions that go into running a business like that. And I knew that people were interested in, in all those anecdotes. And I decided that it would be fun to write a novel, a fiction piece that incorporated my experiences as an innkeeper with um, sort of a, a romance. Um, and that's what I'm working on now is a novel that weaves the life of an innkeeper with um, a young couple who's falling in love and those two lives intersect somehow, but I will not disclose much more than that. You were actually close to self-publishing the novel you just referenced, but you tabled production on it after a literary agent offered to represent you with the goal of, pu of publishing your book traditionally. How much of a surprise was it for you to get an offer of representation right before you were going to self-publish your novel? And what is it like working with your agent? Um, yes, that's a very good question. Um, I was completely blown away, to be honest with you. I I have very little patience. And so um, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to uh, send out hundreds and hundreds of query letters to agents and keep getting rejection after rejection after rejection. Um, so I only sent a handful of query letters out. Um, and I really didn't expect much. I I kind of just did it just for the um, I don't know, just for doing to, to do the exercise and to say that I tried. Um, I sent a few out to agents in New York. Um, I didn't hear much back. Um, I got a couple of rejections um, and I didn't hear back from a few. And so I was well on the way down a self-publishing path, working with a company called Pristine Lee, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, they helped me understand how to market the book, how to market my brand. Um, they set me up with podcasts like yourself. Um, and we were literally ready to launch within the next two weeks when I got an email from an agent that I had queried offering representation and saying they saw a lot of promise for the manuscript. Um, so I needless to say was and you know I really did consider continuing on the self-publishing route because there's a lot of benefits to doing that um you have a, a lot more control um you can literally finish a manuscript one day and publish it the very next day if you want to um so um you know there's a, it's instant gratification and I am an instant gratification kind of person but at the same time, I had a top agent in New York offering to represent me, and it was an opportunity I just could not turn down. So I signed on with them, and I'm also still working with Christine Lee on um, marketing, building my brand and doing the marketing. Um, so they're still in the picture, but I'm right now um, working with my agents. You had asked what that's like, and they've been wonderful. Um, it, they're, um, they're two women from folio management in New York. And um, they gave me a full editorial review of the manuscript with a, a lot of suggestions for improvement. And that's what I'm working on right now is trying to tweak it and um, make it a piece that can get into publishers hands, hopefully. Your upcoming novel will highlight the enduring power of uh, family bonds. Are there specific family structures or relationships that you found particularly intriguing or challenging to explore in your writing? Um, yeah, well, a lot of the family relationships that I explore in my writing stem from my personal experiences Um with family, uh, one of which is I, I do have a son who's adopted. Um, and I also have a set of twins. So I, I really like to explore the theme of nature versus nurture and um, how that relates to my characters, um, because I've seen a lot of that in my own family. And I just think it's a very interesting topic. Um, it's certainly something that is challenging to replicate in my characters in the novel. Um but it is something that I enjoy doing. And, um, you know, I, I think 
I think that um, I can't I can't disclose too much about the book yet. So it's very it's a hard question to answer. But um, I think that when the manuscript is finished, um, the the family dynamics that are present in the book will be a reflection of my own life to some degree. <laughs> now, uh, I don't know. Are you allowed to disclose the title or working title of your book? Not at this point. No. Okay. Okay. Cause I didn't have a question uh, down about that because I wasn't sure. So I'll move on to the next question, which is transitioning from being an innkeeper on Cape Cod to becoming a creative writer is a quite a career shift. How has your background in the hospitality industry impacted your writing? Um, yeah, that is a good question. And I kind of touched on this a little bit is, you know, I, I had, there's, people are very intrigued about the life of an innkeeper. Um, and when I was an innkeeper, you know, I would make the rounds in the morning at the, in the breakfast room and I would talk to guests and I would advise them on their day and, um, you know, help them plan their itinerary and everything. And the conversation always circled back to what is it like to be an innkeeper? Um, you know, what is your day like? What goes on behind the scenes? Like, what are some funny stories that have happened? Um, you know, have you ever walked in on a guest in a at an inappropriate moment? Those those kinds of things, which do happen. Um, and I, I like I said, really wanted to share that in my writing. Um, so making the shift from being an innkeeper to sitting behind my computer screen and sharing some of those anecdotes was a pretty easy transition because I had the material very fresh in my mind. Um, at the same time, it's a very different lifestyle because I used to be running around with my hands in all different pots. I had to be um, an extrovert talking to guests all the time. Um, I was sort of out there all the time, but now I'm holed up in my office and I'm, you know, I'm just writing. Um, so it's, it's a very different type of career. Um, but I'm enjoying it more, to be honest, I'm naturally more of an introvert and I, <laughs> I like to, I like to work on my own like this. Um, uh, but, um, again, let the material, um, is very fresh in my mind. So it's an easy thing to put onto paper. How did you transition from writing personal wedding vows and speeches as a wedding officiant, officiant to writing fiction as an author? Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've written in a lot of different capacities throughout my life. Um, and yeah, the, so the writing the, the wedding vows and wedding speeches and things like that was something that I decided to do really to build the business that I had, which was officiating weddings, I thought, you know, to generate more income, why not have these add-ons that people can, um, you know, can opt in on, um, for an extra fee. Um, I can, I, I just felt like, okay, I can, you know, people are struggling with their personal wedding vows. They don't know what to say. This is something that they've never written before. Um, and it's a very difficult, thing to put your your innermost feelings and promises and hopes for the future into a well articulated vow format and i thought well, i can do that <laughs> you know I, I i thought well i can take their innermost feelings and turn them into beautiful vows so um i put together a questionnaire and i you know asked a whole bunch of questions to really get to the crux of what they wanted to say and I was I was able to do that. Now, that's a completely different writing style from writing a fiction novel and inventing characters and storylines and, you know, writing whatever I want, not what people are dictating. Um, it, but it, I like I said, it's something that I I wanted to do for myself. Um, it's my passion is to write um, things that I can create in my mind. I've always had sort of an overactive imagination and ideas for stories and ideas for books and writing people's personal vows and wedding toasts and things like that was fun and fulfilling. And I still do that. Um, but it's taking their words and just, are, you know, putting them into a more well-articulated format. It's not my words. Um, so while I can do both, I admittedly enjoy 
writing fiction more. In your experience as both a mother of five, an innkeeper, well, I should say as a mother of five, an innkeeper and a wedding officiant, because there was more than two things there. Uh, what are some valuable lessons you've learned about love, family dynamics, and the journey of marriage that you often share with uh, your audience? Well, that's a good question. Um, so um, there's there's three very distinct um, pockets of my life. One is being a mother of five. Um, one is my life as a former innkeeper, and that will always be part of me. And one is a writer. Um, and that also incorporates officiating weddings. Um, what I draw from all three of those pockets, um, is really a passion for storytelling. Um, I think that all of those things have a story and have something to be shared. Um, when I was home between careers with my kids during COVID, for example, I started a mom blog and I, I took my writing in a different direction and I did that for a while. Um, and that was more of a comic relief and sort of a stress reliever um, talking about, you know, the day-to-day -day life of, being in lockdown with five kids and trying to homeschool them and entertain them. Um, and so that's one way that I've incorporated writing into that piece of my life. Um, but I draw from all those experiences when I sit down to, to, to write my novel. Um, and all of that is really reflected in the pages that I'm writing right now. Um, you know, there's there's certainly the theme of motherhood in the in the novel. Um, like I said, there's the theme of inkeeping in the novel. Um, there's the theme of first love in the novel. My husband and I, we uh, have been together since I was 14. So I have my own first love story. And that's something that I really love um, to write about. Um, it's sort of the innocence that goes along with, with falling in love for the first time. Um, so, you know, I draw from all of that and I, I try to, I try to bring all of those themes of love and motherhood and everything that goes with it uh, to the forefront. You mentioned your blog. Now you started out as a, a mom blogger and then you ventured into other topics as a blogger. Is that correct? Um, the blog is primarily um, about motherhood, but, but, you know, what comes with motherhood is like organizing your house and um, great tips for housekeeping. And um, so, yeah, there's definitely other things that have kind of come out within the blog, but the, the central theme is motherhood. Is there a particular blog post uh, that you wrote that resonated uh, deeply with your readers and what inspired you to write that post? Oh, I wrote hundreds of posts during the pandemic. My goal was to write one a day, and I did. And as we all know, the pandemic lasted a lot longer than we initially imagined it would. So I I have literally hundreds of blog posts. Um, there's there's one that stands out in my mind, and it's really just it's just more funny than anything else. Was the day that my vacuum cleaner died, and. Um, I, I decided to, um, you know, share this all with readers and kind of make a funny um, video clip, which is very embarrassing to rewatch, if I'm being honest, but uh, <laughs> I, I said it to the tune of, um, oh, what was it? Something like Love of a Lifetime, one of those 80s ballads where I was parting with my vacuum and <laughs> having a moment. Um, and then I got a new vacuum in the mail and made a whole big production about how much I love this new vacuum. And I was vacuuming all over, over the house and it sounds so silly, but, um, it was something that I got a lot of, of very positive feedback about. Um, I think I was just really entertaining people during a time when people were looking to be entertained. Um, and at the same time I was offering a, um, 
a household solution. It, you know, people were in their houses, right? Hold up and everything for months at a time. So a new vacuum was maybe something that people were looking at. So they, so I actually even got contacted from the vacuum company asking if they could use my blog as a, as a, um, a marketing tool. Um, and I, and people were like buying this vacuum that I had bought because they saw me falling in love with it through the eighties ballad, all of that. Um, so I, I mean, it's not, it wasn't particularly poignant, um, but it was funny at a time when I think that everyone needed some humor in their life. One final question. Uh, what is your creative process when developing new ideas or exploring different themes like? Um, I tend to just like kind of come up with something and just go with it. I, I don't sit and like plan it all out. I'm not one of these people who has like post-it notes all over a bulletin board and like I'm like mapping it all out. Um, I'm not a plotter or a planner when it comes to writing. Um, I, I more sort of I have a very loose idea of where I want the story to go. And I may know the ending and the beginning, but I don't know how it's going to fill in the, in the middle until I sit down and start writing. So my creative process is not really a process at all. It's more, it's more kind of sitting there and seeing what, what comes out of my fingertips. Um, it, it's, it, it's, um, it's, detrimental in some ways because I then I'll go back and be like oh wait a second you know that doesn't make sense there like I need to rework that I need to put this in the beginning I forgot to mention this so it all comes together eventually it's just sort of a um a lot of different spirals to get there if that makes sense um it's 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 not um premeditated it's certainly something that just sort of unfolds and i watch to see where it's i wait and see what's going to happen jill you were an amazing guest i hope your publishing journey goes well and i thank you for appearing on apollo papyrus well thank you very much for having me it was a pleasure that's the first time I've interviewed an author who can't reveal the name of an upcoming book for legal reasons, but I wish Jill the most of success with her book, and I hope it's published soon. This is Aaron Apollo Camp reminding y'all to write and read your passion. Bye for now! Remember to subscribe to the Apollo Papyrus YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash at Apollo Papyrus and the Apollo Papyrus Substack newsletter at apollopapyrus.substack.com. Y'all can visit the Apollo Papyrus website at camparinapollo.witsite.com forward slash Apollo Papyrus and follow Apollo Papyrus on threads, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr at Apollo Papyrus. Copy Copyright 2024, Aaron Apollo Camp, all rights reserved. This podcast episode is intended for the private listening of our audience. Any reuse or retransmission of this episode without the express written consent of the podcast host is prohibited, except under fair use guidelines. Royalty-free music and sound effects obtained from https colon forward slash forward slash www.zapsplat.com.